Good morning and a blessed Easter morning to you all from Faith Lutheran Church in Shelby Township. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We begin our victory chant, our cheer of God. So we recognize, we reinforce, and we lift our hearts with our words as we celebrate and witness that Christ is risen today. Alleluia. I want us to consider that first Easter. There were no joyful celebrations or churches packed with parishioners. Instead, there was fear and anxiety and crushing disappointment. They had seen their hope crucified. They had seen Jesus laid in the tomb. And now when the women came, they were ready to prepare a body for death, for burial. We know that those first Christians couldn't understand what really had happened, how the world had changed utterly and completely. We're living in a time now when Easter celebrations will not be the same as they have been, when they might be more muted, when in fact we'll even long for each other more because we're physically distanced from each other. In Illinois, the CDC has determined that the peak of the coronavirus will happen on April the 12th. That's Easter. It's not lost on me that the forces of death are raising their strength and their head at the very moment when Jesus was raised from the dead. I think on this Easter, we can sing our alleluias nevertheless. We might be a little tentative at first, the way the women were when they came to the tomb or the disciples who were locked in the upper room. There might be a growing hope and strength in our alleluia as we realize that life is continuing and that God has a future for us. There'll be defiance in our alleluias as we take a look at death and all those deadly forces and say, you will not win. And finally, there will be joy, the everlasting joy that God loves us completely and has brought us into eternal life. So, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image, and you planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water. For the water everywhere, bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Gospel reading for today, this Easter Sunday, is from the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning with the first verse. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead. Indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message to you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the early part of World War II, a Navy submarine was stuck on the bottom of the harbor of New York City. It seemed that all was lost. There was no electricity and the oxygen was quickly running out. In one last attempt to rescue the sailors from the steel coffin, the U.S. Navy sent a ship equipped with Navy divers to the spot on the surface directly above the wounded submarine. A Navy diver went over the side of the ship to the dangerous depths in one last rescue attempt. The trapped sailors heard the metal boots of the diver land on the exterior surface and they moved to where they thought the rescuer would be. In the darkness, they tapped in Morse code is there any hope? The diver on the outside, recognizing the message, signaled by tapping on the exterior of the sub, yes, there is hope. That is our Easter message today, in fact. Yes, there is hope. There is hope. This is the picture of the dilemma that we face this Easter Sunday. Humankind is trapped in a dreadful situation. All around, we are running low on hope, and we look for a word from beyond, offering this hope to us. This world in which we live is plagued with illness, isolation, death, and fear. And as if it were not enough, we also have to deal with lost incomes, mounting debts, all of this while being separated from our communities that center us by being distanced from our families that love us. How do we find our balance in this time? The more we try to rescue ourselves, the more we seem to fall behind. We wonder today, is there any hope? There is a real challenge in our world that we would be so caught up in Good Friday and so entrenched and so exhausted 
and so fearful during Holy Saturday that our grip would become so strong that we wouldn't reach the morning light of Easter. You see, because we live most of our lives stuck in Good Friday, Holy Saturday, those days between the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ, we live as if that expanse of time is what in fact dominates our lives. But our Easter gospel tells us different. You see, the stone was rolled away. The tomb was empty. He was not there. Jesus was not stuck in Good Friday, Holy Saturday. Jesus was gone. Jesus was raised. Jesus was within the Easter people, the resurrection people. And Jesus desires us to join God in that experience, to join our loved one, that great cloud of witnesses in that experience. Jesus wants us to put to rest Good Friday, Holy Saturday, to put to rest our death, to put to rest our isolation, and to breathe new life in Easter. The words of invitation are there. Come and see. The same words of invitation that our disciples used to bring brothers and to bring others into the ministry of Christ. Is he the Messiah? Come and see. Has he been raised? Come and see. Invitation and proof. Comfort and healing. Companionship and growth. Come and see. What are we to see? An empty tomb. He is not there. He has been raised. How does that help us? What does that mean for us in this day? We'll take the sub sailors in that submarine story, surrounded by struggle and certain death. It is literally in the midst of the risk of death the darkness that they were encompassed by, that they heard those words. There is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Come and see. And it doesn't matter the how. It really doesn't matter at all. What matters is the hope. What matters is that there is one who knows our fears, and who knows our challenges, who knows our risk, who knows our suffering, and still comes to us, who finds us, who saves us. Come and see. The angel then gave these words to the ladies at the tomb and to us. When we come and see and once we have digested, once we have received that message, that hope, once we have received that promise, we must go and tell. What do you think that the first thing that those sailors did after they decoded the diver uh, and his Morse code message of, yes, there is hope. Do you think that they silently contemplated it? Wondered about the opportunities and, and the processes? Do you think that they held on to those words and thought, wow, that's a pretty positive message? She whiz. Ah, such good news. I think I'll keep it to myself. Do you think that's what they did? I don't. I think they went and told. They responded to go and tell without even that command. Because when there is something that good, we cannot help but say, come and see. Now go and tell. We see. We go. We tell. Good news bubbles out of us. There is hope. There is resurrection. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. They did not stand silent. They did not stand still. No, I can guarantee they didn't. 
that they couldn't. The news was too big. It was too good. From certain defeat, which they had already accepted, now suddenly had changed. How could they believe it? How could they help but not? Go and tell. Make it real. Share the hope. Go and tell. It is through the going and telling that the message grows, that the message spreads. It is through the telling that you grow. It is through the telling that I grow. We grow because of the promised hope. We grow because of the promised forgiveness, the promised love, the promised resurrection. We are not held any longer imprisoned in Good Friday. We are not lost in that time of purgatory of Holy Saturday. Today, because of an empty tomb, because of a God that loves and resurrects, we are resurrection people. If you don't believe it, come and see. And then go and tell. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Please join me in our statement of faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ indeed has rose just as he said. Go now in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Christ is risen.
Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.